Hey guys, welcome back. This is Absorber once again, doing a tutorial. Nothing new there. Uh, I'm going to do a whole series on voxels. So I promised that for a long time, haven't really gotten around to it. This is the introduction video to that series. This video is going to be learning a bit of basics about voxels. How, what voxels are, how they work in Landmark. The series as a whole is going to go through microvoxels, megavoxels, antivoxels, zero data voxels, zero volume voxels, and manipulating voxels. So, <laughs> on that basis, we need some background knowledge, and that's what this video is about. This is the video that you should watch before jumping into all of those other videos. So, voxels are just one out of many ways to represent three dimensional objects in, for example, a game. When you place a square block in the world, that is essentially a voxel, granted it's the smallest block that you're placing. If that block was built out of other materials than a, than a voxel, if, if we're going to call it a material, let's say that we're using more traditional methods of 3D modeling, such as polygons. Um, in that case, what you would do is, let's think 2D to begin with, you would draw four corners as dots four dots and then those those each of those dots are called a vertex or multiple vertices in between the corners the game or your graphics cards actually calculates that there must be a face like some kind of surface which is a polygon you can also calculate that between the edges which is the points but like between the corners but not the actual surface more like the line on top there for example or the sides or underneath but not, let's not get all the way into that. It's not about 3D modeling, this tutorial. We then take that example and make it 3D. You take that, that square we have here and just uh, do 12 or uh, 8 corners. The game then calculates that this must now be an actual solid object. At least we see it like that. If we skipped like the back there, if, the, if those back corners did not contain data that we are to render a surface between them or polygon between them, then you would see invisibility basically on the back. In Landmark, this is how, you s how objects such as props are made. Characters are made, weapons, tools, everything like that is made using this method because these points are not fixed in space, they're fixed in correlation to each other, but you can manipulate that too. Um, that way you can animate them, or it's at least more practical to animate than a voxel, and here's why. Think of a voxel like a pixel, because voxel actually means a volumetric pixel. So we take our pixel here, and we put it into a grid. And that's essentially what a voxel is. It's, it's, um, it's uh, contained data within a grid, a, a fixed place in space. A point in space. Now make that grid 3D and we have a cube but it's still just the voxel is just that point in space. In this case in Landmark it's told that it's supposed to be a cube because it's a cubed grid and that same grid determines the size of the voxel. So the voxel is just the one element that occupies that space in the grid. This is why you can't animate them easily. For example, you can't rotate a voxel because the grid is square and this is just something that fills up that square space in the grid, so you can't rotate anything. This is also, as a matter of fact, the reason, because I hear a lot of people ask, like, why can't I just paint this side of my wall? Well, that's because you're not painting anything. It's impossible to paint a side of a voxel. A voxel is a volume. It's not sides like the previous example was. Um, so what you're doing is you're changing the material of the entire block. It's impossible to change the material of just the surface because that surface doesn't really exist. It's just rendered that way. Uh, it's, uh, it's part of, uh, of what occupies the space in the grid. Right, so Landmark uses uh, something called Voxel Farm. That's, uh, that's the engine. That's something that isn't developed specifically by Landmark, uh, but it uses that for the voxel part. 
And that then sends data to Sony's own engine, which is called uh, Forge Light, that can read it and, and do other things with it. So these points in space contains more data than just the location of that square. In fact, there is something a little bit different with how Voxel Farm does that than traditional, the, the method I've been telling you about so far. One of those pieces of data, and this is a little bit speculative, this isn't something I have confirmed, it's just what it looks like and what people have thought up that this might be how it works, probably is how it works, is that, and you can see this actually, is that the, uh, the, the faces or surfaces of that box or that one voxel is not just a, uh, a pixel with a volume on it, but it's more like a, a volumetric square that is made up out of triangles. So you can see like every flat uh, square consists of two triangles. So the entire thing, the entire box that is, or block, would actually have 12 sides. You have the, the six sides, the both sides in 3D space, meaning four, another two, which is top and bottom, divided into two triangles on each side. This division into triangles, and it's always the same way. Every, every cube that is divided into triangles, that line goes from the top southeast to the bottom, bottom northwest. What this means is that when you copy things, you've probably seen some of these things glitch out from time to time. When you copy a misshaped voxel or conjoined voxels that has been smoothed, for example, uh, and you rotate it, they change a little bit. That can happen. There are some glitches there. And that's because you're not actually copying the shape. You're copying voxels into a corresponding relation to other voxels. But how the triangles... Um, are positioned is always the same way so if that doesn't work too well with the shape that you've just rendered if you have some weird shape then it will look misplaced after you rotate it you can see that for example in some of those old triangle or not triangle the the, the spiral stairs that I do whenever I do like the last rotation of those stairs the uh, the joint part glitches out that's because they d just don't fit that way because of how those triangles sit together. All right, that's really all I had for this video. It's not supposed to be a super long video, nor is it supposed to be like a university level video because to be quite honest, I'm, I'm not that much of an expert on this. But it's just important to know these things before we go into more advanced topics when it comes to, to voxel uh, modifications and such. Uh, because it makes a whole lot more sense when you have this background information. It makes a lot of sense for other things too, such as, for example, you know now why you can't rotate voxels, why you can't animate things like that, and a lot of other issues that would arise with voxels because of the, them being fixed points in a, in, a, in a 3D grid. Okay, well... I hope that helps. Uh, take a look at uh, at the other videos further into this series. Also, some of the older videos behind in this series is all gathered in a playlist on my channel on YouTube. So if you head over there, you can find it easily sorted into playlists there. If you can't see the next videos in this series, yes, that's simply because I haven't made them yet. But probably I have by the time you see this. So I'll see you for that. Take care.